Welcome to NXT The Game Season 1, Episode 12. It's me, Mike, here, booking the second edition of today's show, keeping all you NXT The Game fanatics up to date. Like I said, I wanted to catch up on, you know, the last couple days that I've missed due to my anniversary, so let's go ahead and get into the 12th episode of NXT The Game. Alright, the show opens up with Zack Ryder having entered the ring. Next, James Storm's music hits, the NXT champion, and he shows up on the ramp. James Storm, Zack, I'm sorry about your damn luck tonight. Getting the draw against the Cowboys isn't a thing of preference, I'm sure. In fact, being made an example of, a warning of Baron Corbin can't be fun, but it is what it is. James looks into the camera, Mama Ryder, my condolences. Storm then slides into the ring and levels Zack and begins to beat him until the bell rings. In an extremely short match, James Storm's defeating Zack Ryder in just under four minutes with a, with a lung blower. The announcing quality uh, boosted the match. This is being held in Macon City Auditorium in Georgia, and we got a 56 rating, so not too bad for the NXT champion out the gate. Zack Ryder continues to be one of the guys that we're helping use build the guys that we're trying to push towards the top of the mountain here in NXT. Alright, now we see Baron Corbin backstage standing in a dark room. James, you've been known for working well with others. You've succeeded as being part of a team. Hell, you've succeeded even in being a leader of a team. But you see, I'm a lone wolf. Everything I've ever done, everything I've ever gotten, I've done and gotten on my own. At TakeOver Glory, that's not going to change. I'm going to put the medal on the trophy, the ornament on the car, the final nail in the coffin. You see, Storm, I've got something for me going for me that you don't. I'm hungry. Corbin stops and smiles. You see, he says, turning up the volume, in just a few weeks... Eden will be declaring me the new NXT champion, James. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about your damn luck. Damn the gimmick infringement. Baron Corbin and James Storm continue to build towards their NXT championship match at the newly announced NXT TakeOver Glory. Alright, now a video shown William Regal and those in charge at Shimmer signing the first official working agreement. So this is just a little segment I put together because I got a little... A couple things with Shimmer going back to back to back in these segments, showing William Regal signing the paperwork. So nothing too major, just wanted to, I've mentioned it before, so I wanted to call attention to it officially. After the Shimmer video plays, the camera shows William Regal in the back shaking hands with Shimmer talent Evie, another woman loaned to NXT as part of the talent exchange. Now, in an extremely short match, Blue Pants defeats Portia Perez in three and a half minutes with the dinner to go. Leva Blue Pants Base has debuted her fan favorite gimmick and it's got an 84, which is very good. Um, you know, she was one of the guys, uh, gals, excuse me, that I grabbed off of the free agent wire when I grabbed the mod. So she's going to be an NXT. I did let go of, you know, Charlotte, of, uh, you know, Sasha. I moved all those people to, uh, to WWE, Kevin Owens. I moved all these people to next. I moved all these people to WWE. So trying to, I started about what was the current NXT roster was a couple weeks ago and now we're just pushing forward. So I got a pretty good match. That was Portia's second match out of 10 on loan to NXT. So she's basically just being used as someone who can be beaten for now to, you know, help build up the ladies without beating uh, any of my current females too badly. All right, we can't hear anything, but we see Triple H and the new road agent of NXT, Scott Hall, just joking backstage, showing the build and the bond of their relationship and teasing the potential twin tension down the line between them and William Regal. So nothing major, just, you know, Shown Triple H with Scott Hall, the newest member of the NXT roster uh, in terms of an executive capacity. A new road agent, as you saw in the last um, last show. A video now hypes Tyler Breeze and Eva Marie, and the winning streak that Tyler has been on since joining up with Eva Marie. It says next week, Tyler Breeze opens an open, uh, issues an open challenge. Opens an issue challenge, opens an issue challenge, whatever. 61 rating, not bad. Again, Eva Marie and uh, Tyler are awesome, I think. Now the camera again turns and William Regal is in the back talking to Finn Balor. William Regal, if it works out for you, Finn, at TakeOver Glory, you can have your match with Drew McIntyre. I'd love to book it for tonight, but you see that's a big money match and I'd like to air it on pay-per-view. No matter to me, Regal, just as long as I get my hands on him. Regal nods. You seem like you want to fight, Finn, and I got a great idea. I'm going to put you in the main event tonight against the newest member of the NXT roster, the Brian Kendrick. Finn Balor smiles. Thanks, Regal. Finn Balor leaves. Regal smiles as well. And again, I'm just trying to push out with the current NXT roster. Um, going forward, though, it's going to be all just different, different, uh, you know, away from the beaten path for the NXT roster. 
Kendrick wasn't a member of the roster, but he's been, been on a couple shows for NXT, so I wanted to bring him in. All right, next. In a match that had average crowd reaction and some decent in reaction, BMAF, the Blake and Murphy factor, the Blake, Alexa, and Murphy factor, defeated Carmella and Enzo and Colin Cassidy in 10 minutes, when Alexa Bliss defeated Carmella by pinfall. The performance of Enzo Mori stood out as being good. That's fantastic, Enzo. You've been pretty negative in terms of uh, your pairing with Carmella lately, so I'm glad you decided to step up your game. The realest dudes in the room storyline has advanced, and the commentary boosted the, uh, the match. The camera now shows the announced a little while ago, Brian Kendrick in the back. Brian Kendrick. You see, when Regal brought me down to Florida, down to NXT, he brought me here because he needed someone who could set a good example. Kendrick pauses. But little did he know I had no interest in setting a good example. I'm a loose cannon. I'm here to not only steal the show, but to climb the rankings and earn a shot at the NXT Championship and then win the NXT Championship. Case in point. Fantastic. He got a zero for his gimmick rating. I don't know if it wasn't, you know, good for him or what, but I checked before and it didn't say he, had, he said he was going to have no problems working the gimmick, but a zero is not great. Um, all right then. Brian Kendrick, uh, that was awful. But again, as you guys have seen as I've, uh, you know, built my promotion out, I, I like to put an emphasis just on very, very uh, back in the day, like, you know, hype promos. Just I like when wrestlers talk about matches and make them important. I like wrestling matches that have some importance to them. All right, Samoa Joe and Rhino are backstage, and an argument breaks out, and they start to brawl with one another. All the road agents and staff have to pull them a right of power. I don't know what that's about, but Rhino and Samoa Joe just got into a verbal art altercation, and then uh, what looks like a brawl. So, uh, that's not good. Now, finally, in an extremely short match, Dana Brooke and Emma defeated Bailey and Candice LeRae when Dana Brooke defeated Bailey by a pinfall with a bulldog, following interference from the debuting Gail Kim. This match also had a lot of interference as Gail Kim targeted LeRae. And she also targeted Bailey with distraction. Um, fantastic. Gail Kim got a, you know, uh, the, the complete opposite. Other side. Kendrick got a zero for his loose cannon, but the bossy gimmick for Gail Kim got a 100. Fantastic. That is amazing. Bailey shown in this match. That's great. After the debut, the debuting Gail Kim begins to wail on both Candice LeRae and Bailey as a three on one, a three on two occurs. The fans boo as they really lay it in with all three holding hands in the middle of the ring together. Which causes Renee on commentary to ask, what is it that ties Dana and Emma to Gail Kim? What's the deal? What's going on? Why did Gail Kim just attack these two lovely ladies? We're not sure. But the newest woman on the MX NXT roster, Gail Kim. I was actually looking for you know a high high ranking uh, female, so uh, now a music video hyping Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy even after their match. So I wanted to promote them a little bit further as the NXT Tag Team Champions. We're looking for a match for them in NXT TakeOver Glory. Does Blake and Murphy get another title shot? I don't know. You know, Carmella got pinned. So, we'll see. The camera now finds Drew McIntyre backstage with Byron Saxon again. Drew, thanks for joining me again this week. Drew nods, blowing bubbles with his gum. We just found out that at TakeOver Glory, you're going one-on-one -on -one with none other than Finn Balor, McIntyre. Baller has so much angered him, but I guess it's his heritage. You see us Scots aren't angry, he pauses. Let me rephrase. We're only angry when it's warranted, and I mean, come on, that's not very often. Before you ask another stupid question, Byron, let me say this. If Finn wanted a match with the chosen one, all he had to do was ask. He didn't have to run the daddy. He did? Whatever. At TakeOver Glory, he gets his match. That's fine. I just know he's going to get what he asked for. The Finn and Drew storyline has advanced. So building up to a Drew McIntyre-Finn Balor match at uh, NXT TakeOver Glory... We also have announced, you know, the Baron Corbin versus James Storm match, and another match which will be revealed soon. Renee Young. Now we've just been given word that next week we're gonna have an eight-man tag team main event. Next week we're gonna see NXT champion James Storm team with Drew McIntyre, Solomon Crow, and Rhino to take on Baron Corbin, Finn Balor, Apollo Cruz, and a Samoa Joe. And if you can't tell by now, after having watched the last three or four shows after Takeover Eden. They're all confirmed. James Storm's taking on Baron Corbin at TakeOver. Uh, Drew McIntyre's taking on Balor. Cruz and Crow are going one-on-one. -on -one. And now Rhino and Samoa Joe look to be heading that direction as well. As you can see down below, the Starry Bunch of Damn Luck storyline has advanced. The Crow and the Cruise Control storyline has advanced. The Finn and Drew storyline has advanced. And it looks like we are heading away to a very, very full NXT TakeOver glory card. Now, main event. 
Had some good action in Aberchi. Brian Kendrick defeated Finn Balor in 1239 after a distraction from Drew McIntyre. That's right, Drew McIntyre distracted Finn Balor, and the Brian Kendrick gets his victory in a debut. And that's NXT TakeOver tonight. They don't have enough interesting storylines again. This is the fourth show in a row we've increased in 10 and lost in 1. I don't know where we've actually lost it. I haven't checked. But um, thanks for watching the this edition of NXT TakeOver the game. I will post this up right now. Try to get another one or two out tomorrow. And uh, try to figure out what's going on with the storylines. We have like eight storylines. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe they're not rated highly enough. I'm not sure. But uh, thanks for watching.